I made a decision that I wanted to be a doctor when I was six years of age, and I clung to that tenaciously. My name is Frances Shepard. I'm a medical oncologist at the Princess Margaret Hospital. I treat patients. I am a clinician. My main area of clinical treatment and research is lung cancer. Lung cancer is not a death sentence. It's now very treatable. When I first started treating lung cancer patients, basically the thought was that if the tumor had spread beyond the chest, or even widely within the chest, that there was no hope for treatment, and patients, in a sense, were told to go home and get their affairs in order. We have many, many treatment options that we can offer to prolong life and to improve symptoms and not reduce the quality of life with our treatment. We are beginning to understand the molecular abnormalities of lung cancer and other cancers as well. And we are introducing very specific treatments. And when we do that, we are seeing responses, tumors shrinking dramatically in the range of 80%, not in the range of 30% with the one-size-fits-all approach. Being a cancer doctor isn't easy day to day. We don't cure all our patients. And, and it's hard to tell family members their relatives are dying. And you do need an escape. I escaped to my own family, and of course, when our children were young, they would immediately take over the minute I got home. And that in, it was an escape in and of itself. But uh, more recently, although family is still a wonderful way to escape, I also have this artistic escape with porcelain and the history of porcelain. It started uh, a few years ago when we renovated an old century house in downtown Toronto and I had some wall space between vertical windows and I wanted to put something there. And at an antique fair here in Toronto, I found four antique French plates. And they had beautiful coats of arms on them. What makes me love it so much? I don't know. It's totally remote from cancer. I think it just brings out my artistic side. And when they are armorial, you know the history of the family, you know what they did for a living. And it just brings that old 200 to 300 year old porcelain to life. It takes decades to make progress. You can't change the outcome of cancer in a day, a month, or a year. And you have to be patient. To run a clinical trial may take 10 years. And that trial may be negative at the end of 10 years. You have hoped that it will be positive. We always go into a clinical trial wanting to improve outcome. But the day you get the results of the positive clinical trial, that's what makes it worth it. In the year 2004, we received the results of two very major clinical trials. One of them was a trial of the first molecularly targeted drug to be evaluated in lung cancer. This was a drug being introduced in the third line setting, the setting where there was no hope. The results were being given to us on a Saturday afternoon. They had enormous implications for the company that was developing the drug. The company would have ceased to be if the study had been negative. I went into the office, we had a conference call, and it was a positive study. The first ever positive study of a molecularly targeted agent in lung cancer, the first ever study in the third line treatment of lung cancer to prolong survival. That was very, very satisfying. The other moment that was extremely satisfying was in the same year when our adjuvant trial of post-op chemotherapy improved the cure rate. These two studies undoubtedly changed practice at a global level worldwide. I think there are a lot of misconceptions that the public might have at large about cancer in general and uh, lung cancer in particular. I think it's very important 
that we let the public know what strides have been made, what improvements in treatment have been made. Even if we can't make things better forever, I want to focus on the positive that we will make things better over the next few months or some years. We don't want to dwell on the negative aspects. Lung cancer is the toughest nut to crack. 